Hello friend, this is Ryan Hicks of TalkToProfit.com and today I want to talk to you about changing what you're doing if it's not working. I get people regularly contacting me wanting coaching and they'll start in and this is unsolicited so I haven't said anything to them, I haven't criticized or critiqued anything and they start by saying, well what I'm doing is right, my church is teaching the right things or my pastor's telling me the right things but I've been doing it for five years or 10 years or 20 years or whatever, and it hasn't gotten me any results. What do I need to do? So they go in with an unteachable spirit, stating for the record that what they're doing is not wrong, but it's not working. So there's some disconnect there where they realize this is not right, but I don't want to say it's not right because a church leader or a pastor or somebody I respect has told me this is somehow what Christians are supposed to do, so I got to keep doing this particular thing that's not working for me. Because sometimes people will start in with something, they've only been doing something for a week, so they haven't had time to properly judge whether that works or not. That's understandable. But if you have years or decades of failure, of it not working for you, of it not doing what you want it to do, then how can you keep doing that thing? It obviously doesn't work. Now, is it right or wrong? That's a different question. Because some of these things, maybe it's right for some people. But maybe for you, you need to be doing different things. There are people who get settled in with these traditions of men that religions tell them to, oh, you know, you gotta tithe money. The scripture doesn't teach that. Yes, you give. But you give from a pure loving heart and then you get return from that but most modern quote unquote tithing money which is unscriptural in the first place is done grudgingly of necessity and the scripture is very plain that god loves a cheerful giver so those people are doing something that will never get them good results they're they're warned from malachi by their pastors who all have a financial interest in getting them to tithe more money. You know, you're robbing God in tithes and offerings. Really? What are you bringing to the storehouse? Well, but for today, that's the bank. No, it's not. It never was. The tithe was of those things that you brought into a storehouse. These were from people who had farms and had agriculture going on. It wasn't money, and they had money, but it wasn't money. So there are people who've been told, oh, I got to tithe money and this is my tithe and I got to do it otherwise I'm robbing God and I'm cursed with a curse. And no, that's not what the scripture's saying and that's not for you. The thing, even with the tithe, the real tithe, the agricultural products being brought in, even the poor weren't supposed to tithe. There are people who are very poor who are tithing money, which wasn't even scriptural, and they're doing it when the scripture said in the original tithe that it wasn't even for the poor. God wasn't trying to take from the poor who had little, take the little they had. That was never the idea. It was about being abundant and, and giving and generous and blessing and honoring God with that tenth. But today people are broke. They haven't had money forever. They're never going to have money because they're doing the same things over and over. Oh, I'm tithing money. Oh, I'm doing this. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm giving these mission programs. Why? Is it good seed? Your seed is good. What about the soil? You know, I, I used to give to a lot of different missionaries. And I started following one of them, their itinerary. And I was like, wait, when are they in the country they're supposed to be missionaries to? In a little bit of investigation, I realized they only were in that country being quote unquote missionaries one month of the year. And really what it was was for photo ops. Put a banner up, get a bunch of poor kids around you. Everybody feels sad and wants to give money. And then the other 11 months of the year, they were fundraising. And it disgusted me. I wanted no more part of that. And I realized that I've been sowing my seed into bad ground. You know, it's one thing to do something from a kind, generous heart. But when you recognize a mistake, when you recognize an error, 
You don't double down and keep doing the same foolish error. It's all right if you're ignorant, you didn't know. But if you keep sowing your seed into bad soil and wonder why you're not getting a good harvest, my friend, you can't keep going down that path. That's folly and that's foolishness. There's no wisdom in that. God didn't give you this great gift of intellect so you can sit here and not think and turn your brain off, not receive any wisdom from God, and just do what other people tell you to do that hasn't worked for them either. There's a lot of people doing things that don't work because they're afraid of the implications of not doing them. Well, you know, if I don't tithe money, then it looks like I'm greedy. Who cares? Not tithing money does not mean you don't give. You should be giving as much as you can, way more than 10%. The greedy are the people who are only giving the 10% and think they've done their duty, they've done their service to God. Meanwhile, the whole time they're dreading it and they're, they're doing it grudgingly and, oh, you know, I've got to pay my tithe. You have to pay a tithe like it's a bill. You've already lost and you've already robbed yourself of any potential blessing you could have from the giving. The tithe of money was never even asked of you in the first place. But the giving could be rewarded, though, because giving is always rewarded. But it's always rewarded when it's done from a cheerful heart, not that grudging and bill-paying mentality. If it's some debt you owe, then you're not gonna, what can you be rewarded for? You've already been rewarded. It's a debt you're paying. And you're not honoring God in that. So really examine what you're doing. Financially, people are doing things they've been told to do that are supposedly good for them, supposedly Christian behavior, and it doesn't work. Meanwhile, Jesus said to him that has little, even that which he hath will be taken from him. Why? Why is it that he also said that in that same passage that to him that has a lot, more will be given to him? It's because that person who has a lot continues to do the right things. They continue to reap more. They continue to have that right vibrational state to receive even more. But that person with little, they get greedy, they hoard. They do things that are religious practices to supposedly drum up money or trick God into blessing them. And all this folly, the, the giving they do is done grudgingly and of necessity. They rob themselves every step of the way of the blessing of the Lord that he's freely giving. And there are so many practices out there that are just like that. How many professing Christians do I hear tell me, well, you know, I can't go on a vegan diet because of blah, blah, blah. And they have some lie they made up or something somebody told them. Where am I going to get my protein? The same place that huge bison gets its protein from, from plants. The same thing those huge gorillas get their protein from, plants. You know, people just fall in with traditions of men. And then they reinforce them, reinforce that error, and refuse to change. Listen, if what you're doing is not working, why wouldn't you change everything? Why would you examine everything you're doing and do something different? At least try. This is not saying you have to permanently do these things, but test it out. Test theories out. Okay, I've been tithing money for decades and get nothing out of it. Zero results, if I'm being honest. Okay, let me change that. What do I need to do? Has my attitude been going into giving money as a tithe? Been I'm paying a bill, I'm paying a debt? It's something I don't want to do, but I have to do. Otherwise, I'm under some penalty of cursing. Wow, I need to change my heart. And then you change your heart about it and start giving. Maybe your heart has been right in that. You've been just wanting to be generous. Okay. Even though the tithing of money is an error in itself, your generosity is not an error. And maybe you've been doing it with a cheerful heart. Okay. But have you been sowing into bad ground? Very often, your local church is bad ground. And if you're giving to some televangelists, that's probably bad ground as well. Are you giving to useful endeavors that actually bring about results? You know, I get people all the time that, we well, you know, can you help this orphanage? Can you help this place over here? Can you help this group over here? And 
the groups they they want that supposedly have all this need are bad ground to give to they're frivolous they waste and they're very dependent on others and they do nothing to be self-sustaining even when people try to help them well is that wise to give to that to reinforce those people in their refusal to do the work they need to do i'm not telling you that you should refuse to help people but you need to be wise in where you're giving your money you presumably have a limited amount even if you had billions and billions of dollars you still have a limited amount you can get more there's no limit to god's abundance but you may currently possess a limited amount and so you need to be very wise in your giving not just following what everybody else is doing so make sure the ground you're giving into is good ground to sow that seed into that it's actually bringing about good results not bringing about the opposite result there have been all kinds of books and studies done on charitable giving and the negative results it brings think of this think of if you donate to a village a thousand t-shirts oh wow that's great you just help them everybody has shirts to be clothed that sounds great doesn't it and yet the unknown and untold consequence is disastrous because there were a number of families in that village that made the clothing for the village well who's going to hire them who's going to pay them a penny when they have free clothes coming in and so the little bit of industry that was in the the village is now crushed and destroyed and bankrupted by this generosity and that happens all over the world where relatively well-meaning people who aren't actually investigating the seed they're being sown is going into good ground give and cause more problems more disaster and do more harm than good with their quote-unquote generosity so be wise be prayerful be considerate about what you're doing and how you're giving and the acts you're you're committing that they're the right things that you know to do good and you do it that you don't just do what other people say is good you do what is actually good and right by the leading of the spirit and that may require you to change a whole lot of the things you do each day the things you've accepted as right that are actually wrong but that is for you to do you to make that choice you to be the person in control of your life operating in a high vibrational state and walking in the wisdom and knowledge and grace of God to do the right thing my friend I pray this is a blessing for you I pray this will help you change your mind renew your mind to the truth and walk in that truth change the things you need to change that aren't working for you and become that person of character and substance who has the abundance and blessing and overflow of God flowing freely in their lives. My friend, I pray this is a blessing for you. May God bless you richly.